freelancing is really hard. I mean, you not only need to be an incredibly good web developer, but you also need to understand how to run a business, how to market yourself, how to find clients, and so much more. So in this video, I'm going to cover the five biggest mistakes that I noticed with freelancers that is costing them thousands of dollars and preventing them from getting the clients they need. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Also, when I was planning out this video, I had a really hard time narrowing down to just five individual mistakes because I've seen so many mistakes that web developers have made while freelancing. And these mistakes have cost them clients, they've cost them hours of their life, and thousands of dollars in potential revenue. But luckily, you don't need to make those same mistakes because Kyle Prislu is offering you a 20% off coupon for his complete freelance web development bundle. And this course is amazing. I went through this course and I learned so much about freelancing. And not only that, but it also includes tons of resources such as templates and contracts, which are absolutely imperative when you are a freelancer. So I highly recommend you use the link down in the description to check out that course and use the code WDS20 to get 20% off. Also, if you do use that link in the description, I will get a portion of the sale, so you'll be directly helping out the channel by purchasing through the link down below. Now onto the very first mistake that I see freelance web developers make, and that is that they use too much technical jargon when they're talking to a client. Most of the time, and by most of the time, I mean 99.9% .9 of the time, when you hire a client, they don't know anything about technology. They probably barely know how to use the internet, barely know how to use the computer, and that is why they are hiring you. You are the expert, and they don't know anything about computers. So when you start telling them about the differences between SQL and NoSQL and why you want to use Node.js on the back end with Express, their eyes just glaze over, they have no idea what you're talking about, and they really struggle to follow along. Instead, what you need to do is explain things in simple terms. Most of the time, your clients are going to be business-minded somewhat. They're either going to be running their own business or they're going to be a manager for some business. So making sure that you structure your wording and terminology around the idea of business topics is going to make it really easy for them to understand. Instead of explaining how NoSQL is going to be faster and more performant for your specific use case because of the way the JSON serializes, instead just say, hey, we're going to go with this option because it's going to increase the conversion rate by making your page load times faster. That is something that your client understands, that is something that they resonate with, and they could care less about the actual reason behind it. They just want to know, okay, the people that see my page are going to see it quicker. That's all they care about. So make sure that you cut out all of that technical jargon and just give them the easy straight facts using the terminology that they are used to. That is going to make your customers like you so much more and you're going to have so much more repeat business with clients if you do this. Also, speaking of clients, it's hard to get clients when you're first starting out. So it's really important that as a freelance developer that you learn to market. This is the second big mistake that I see freelance developers make is that they do either no marketing, which is terrible and you're never going to become a freelancer that way, or they do really, really bad marketing and they just don't know how to market themselves out to different clients. So you need to figure out the best way to market. And in my opinion, one of the best ways to market yourself is to go to places where your clients are going to be. A lot of times your clients are business minded, like I've said, so you need to go to these business focused meetups, business focused conferences, and introduce yourself to clients there. By doing this, you're essentially saving your client the time of having to find you. You are going out there and finding them so that they don't have to figure out the best technique to find web developers. They don't have to go through the process of looking through resumes and looking through posts on Upwork or freelance.com or wherever. They just found you because you came up to them and said, hey, I'm a freelance web developer. Can I help you? And now I know going to conferences is not always the easiest thing, especially right now where no one can go to any conferences. So the next best thing that you can do is try to introduce yourself online virtually to them wherever they go. Go to different groups online that are business focused. Maybe find some emails of people that you may already know that are business minded. See if you reach out to them. See if they know anybody. I'm sure you probably at least know one person in the business field. So reach out to them. Ask them if they need help. And if not, ask them if they know anyone that needs help. Because sure enough, eventually you're going to get connected with someone. And that'll make it so much easier to get your first client or even future clients 
because you have those connections and you don't have to worry about people finding you because that is hard to do. Now the third mistake I see freelance developers make is by far the biggest and that is not charging enough. All the time I see freelancers constantly cutting their prices and cutting their prices trying to be the lowest priced option out there and that is a terrible approach. Most of the time when you're the lowest priced option, you're going to get the worst clients. Clients that are going to want the most amount of changes, clients that are going to constantly try not to pay you because they're going for the cheapest option and not necessarily the best option, and those are not the clients you want. So even if cutting your prices gives you more clients, these clients are going to be more work, they're going to be more trouble, and it's going to be harder to get paid from them. On top of that, with such low prices, you may have a hard time even surviving on the paycheck you make from freelancing. If you're only charging $10 an hour to make websites, then it's going to be hard to survive off of that compared to people that are charging $100 an hour or $200 an hour, especially considering the clientele level you're going to get because you're going to get the worst clients which require so much work. Trust me, if you do anything, it is raise your price. I know it may seem harder to find clients at a higher price, but if you go from charging $10 an hour to $100 an hour, you only need to find one tenth of the clients that you had before. So instead of having to have 10 clients, you only need one client to make the same amount of money, which means that you can work one tenth the amount of time to make the same amount of money. And that means you can spend extra time working on marketing, working on finding clients. That way you can find the best clients, charge them more money so they know they're going to be getting a good service because you are worth that extra cost. Trust me, it is a hard skill to learn web development. So if you know it, make sure you charge the premium because you are worth it and they are not going to regret spending that much money on you because they need the website and you're going to give it to them. Now I know this may be difficult to do when you're very first starting out trying to get your very first client, it is really tempting to charge those lower prices. And I think for your very first client, it's okay to charge slightly less than what you normally would want to charge just so you can get your name out there. But make sure that doesn't become your normal because soon enough, if you charge too low of a price, you're going to be overwhelmed by clients that are terrible. You're not going to have enough time in your day and you're not going to be able to afford the things that you want. So make sure that you're constantly raising your prices to keep them competitive where they're in a premium level and so that you're not overwhelmed by spending too much time working on client projects. Now this kind of nicely leads on to the fourth mistake I see people make, which is letting the client run too much of the project. And you see this a lot with the clients that tried to go for that bottom tier cheapest option. They try to run everything, even if it's a terrible mistake, even if they want to throw 500 types of analytical scripts to track the user onto the site, which slows the page down to a crawl and just crushes their conversion rate, they're going to tell you they want it. And your goal as the freelancer you are the expert. You are the one that understands this the best. So your job is to not only build them a website, but also to be that expert and inform them in situations where they're making a bad decision. I know it's really hard to go up to a client and say, you are wrong. This is not what we should do, but you need to be able to do that because that is what they're paying you for. They're not just paying you for a website. They're paying you for your skills and expertise. So make sure you give those to them. Now, I'm not saying just to tell them they're wrong all the time and just do whatever you want, but you need to talk to them about the ideas they're making, especially if you think their ideas are bad. Make sure you at least voice your opinion and try to talk them into a different option that gives them the same result they're looking for, but maybe in a better way that works better for the end user and works better for you. Now, try to be as nice as you can when you approach this. Just going up to them and saying, hey, you're wrong, you're dumb, we're doing it this way is a great way to lose all of your clients. But if you can say, hey, I see that you want to increase your analytics by adding all these analytics trackings, well, how about you just add one tracker and I can hook you up with someone that knows how to set up the dashboard for that tracking analytics so you can get the same level of reporting without slowing down your page, which means you're going to get more sales in the end. If someone told me that, I would be like, oh, sweet, that sounds like a great idea. It's less work. I pay less money. I get the same result and I get more sales. So if you can introduce your ideas that you want in a way that makes sense to them, and satisfies the needs that they have with their bad idea, that is really important. Just doing what the client says every time may seem like a good idea at first, but in the end, it's just going to make a worse product, a less happy client, and it's going to make you much less happy. So I would recommend being the expert and showing them that you know what you're talking about and trying to help them with the best solution possible. Now, the fifth and final mistake I see 
is something that the developer makes a problem of, and that is forgetting what the purpose of the project was in the first place. It can be really easy as a developer to get deep into the technical aspects of the code and start writing out really clean, cool code that does all these really fancy things and is optimized for a million users with a million different connections all across the world. But in reality, if you're making a website for a baker in your local city that's never going to be viewed outside of your city, do you really need all that extra over-engineering and technicality? Probably not. So what you need to do is make sure you remember the purpose of the project, because if you let that stray out of your mind, you're going to start over engineering things and over becoming technical in the project and throwing in like React and Vue and Svelte and all these crazy things into just a brochure website. So make sure that you understand the project, understand the scope and understand the use case of the project. You want to be thinking about it as the business focused mindset. Is this website meant to get sales? Is it meant to generate leads? Is it meant to do something else? Make sure you understand that because if you don't, you're going to make the same mistake your client makes where you start introducing bad ideas yourself. And it's harder to listen to the client when they tell you your ideas are bad because you may not mention it to them. So they may not realize the hundreds of hours you're working on spending on scaling the infrastructure is completely useless because they don't understand that. So you need to make sure that you are the expert in this situation and figure out what is essential for the project and you don't over engineer things or over become technical inside the code because that's just going to end up with a worse project that's going to cost the client more money and make them less likely to come back to you for future services. And that's the five biggest mistakes I see. If you want to learn all the other mistakes freelance web developers are make and make sure that you don't make those same mistakes, make sure you check out the course down in the description below. It is an absolutely incredible course and I highly recommend it for anyone that's considering freelancing or just starting out with freelancing. And with that said, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.